New profile picture. Woo! Look at the weird group of. A big thanks goes to Dismay Arts, an amazing friend and artist for this picture. Go give her art a look see and perhaps a follow. And now, onward to the video. Hello, Professor Rosemary here and welcome to my lab. So a few years ago I saw this, and for some reason I thought I see Charger Bug. Fast forward to today and I have no idea how I came to that conclusion. But I entertained the idea and I think I found a way to make it work. And in my research for crepe recipes, I kind of fell into a rabbit hole trying to understand one thing. Why is it exactly do I need to let my crepe batter rest? Pretty much all the crepe recipes I've read had said that I needed to do that, but like, I'm the one doing all the work making and cooking your crepes and you don't hear me asking for a rest? Ugh. Sass aside, I do understand that most steps in big goods are anything but arbitrary. Plus, the science behind foods had been a subject I wanted to touch more on on this channel. So let us today delve into some crepe science and let's get making! Here's what you'll need. Allow your ingredients to come to room temperature before starting. Start by combining your milk and sugar. Heat it up on medium heat until the sugar dissolves and the milk is warm to the touch. Then to 3 beaten eggs, add the milk slowly while whisking. Preferably without making a mess. Slowly add and whisk in your melted butter in the same way as well. After that, combine your cake flour, matcha powder, and baking powder, and sift them together. Mix in half of the dry ingredients until roughly combined, then mix in the rest until just combined. Your batter might look a bit lumpy at this point, but it's all good. We'll address that a little later. So, remember I mentioned that we're going to explore some crepe science? Well, here's some science for you. Crepes are ideally soft, tender, and light. There are a couple of things we can do to achieve this. Firstly, by mixing the flour until just combined, we limit the development of gluten. The more gluten that's developed, the more rubbery, chewy, and elastic the end product will be. This is desirable in breads, but not so much in cakes and, in this case, crepes. That's why we mentioned not to overmix the batter in certain recipes. On the other hand, the ideal texture of crepes can be achieved by using cake flour instead of all-purpose flour or bread flour, as it limits gluten formation as well. This is because cake flour is also known as low-protein flour, and bread flour is a high-protein flour, while all-purpose flour has a protein content of somewhere in between. And of these proteins, around 80% of them are gluten precursors. So a lower protein content means less gluten precursors and less gluten development, which makes for more tender crepes. On the other, other hand, one more factor to making delicate crepes is allowing the batter to rest, usually for an hour up to overnight. This resting period allows the starch in the flour to get fully hydrated and swell, which in turn gets rid of most of the lumps, helps to cook the crepe evenly, and thickens the batter. On top of that, any gluten that you've worked up gets a chance to relax in its resting phase, and as we've discussed, less gluten development equals more tender crepes. But professor, I ain't got that kind of time. I just want my crepes. Well, no need to take my word for it. Let's put our theory into practice. I'm going to set aside half of the batter, covering and resting it in the fridge. Then with the other half, let's whip up some crepes. Since the unrested batter is still super lumpy, I'm going to strain it and smooth it out. To cook them, heat a frying pan on low heat and oil lightly. Give your batter a quick stir to even out the consistency and spread enough of it to cover the bottom of your pan. Let it cook for 2-3 to three minutes until the edges look dry and somewhat crispy. Carefully flip the crepe and cook the other side for 30 seconds more. Once done, transfer to a plate and cover it with something like a clean cloth to prevent it from drying out while we cook the other crepes. Use up the rest of the batter, stirring each time before pouring. At first glance, these crepes look fine and seem pretty tasty as well. But how can we say for sure? Let's use our rested batter this time and see how it fares. I sieve the remaining batter to get rid of the remaining lumps and as I give it a quick stir, I didn't really observe any noticeable differences in the thickness. I cooked the rested batter in the same way and that's when I felt a difference. The rested batter gave crepes that felt less elastic, softer and more delicate. Good news is that you'd feel the same texture in your mouth. Bad news is that since the crepes are less elastic, they tore easier as well, so do be careful with that. After both batches of crepes were completely cooled, I gave them a bit of a sensory test. I can't transmit what I'm feeling through a YouTube video, so you'll <laughs> just have to take my word for it. As postulated, the unrested crepes felt more rubbery and leathery. They also felt a tad tougher to chew. 
Meanwhile, the rest of the crepes felt lighter, thinner, and more delicate. They also had sort of a melt-in-your-mouth texture when eaten. Though, with all that said, it's not the end of the world if you can't find cake flour or if you don't rest your batter. Heck, you might even prefer rubbery crepes. I don't think I'll be coming to your kitchen and eating your crepes anytime soon, so you do you, my friend. As much as baking is an interesting science, I believe that it should be fun too. Speaking of fun, let's turn the rest of the crepes, which I prefer, into little charger bugs. If you're interested in how these fillings were made, head on to the video in the iCard. I'm preparing them in a separate video because I felt that this crepe science and the convoluted filling preparation makes for a pretty long-winded video. But the idea is to divide charger bugs face into a 3x3 grid and stack up fillings to recreate that face. And with that said, time for the big reveal. Uh, I guess if you squint hard enough, you'll see Charger Bug? Uh, who am I kidding? Of all the things that have gone wrong in the lab, this is one that I don't think I can salvage. But since I still have a bunch of trips and all this footage, I guess I can only improvise. So there you have it, regular green tea crepes. It seems that humans aren't the only things that perform better after a rest, and honestly, I had quite the fun researching and nerding out on sweets like this. Do let me know if you want to see more sciencey videos like this by letting me know in the comments or by leaving a like. If you were almost bored to death, then <laughs> let me know as well. So that's all for now, I hope you guys can try this out, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.